What's going on YouTube? Today I'm bringing you a pretty chill video and by that I mean I lost most of the footage for this video when my hard drive went kaput. So I'll be talking over what little footage I salvaged and you'll get a lot of drawings from me. So yay for you I guess. <laughs> So housekeeping first. The doll in this video is Atlas, my custom house Biso Eye Yu Yu. His eyes are from the artist Citrus Skull and I'll have links to these in the description box below. With that out of the way, let's talk about the focus of today's video, namely making a wig for my doll Atlas out of the most unusual material I've ever used, feathers. I'll share with you the process I went through as well as some tips based on what I learned while trying to make this wig. So to get started we obviously need a wig cap. I'll be making a video about how I go about creating wig caps for dolls soon but the long and short of it is as follows. I apply a protective layer of plastic to the doll's head, usually a freezer bag. I cover this plastic layer in a thin knit fabric as this allows me to pull out any pockets, keep the wig free of folds and basically make it as close to the shape of the doll's scalp as possible. I use small elastics to hold everything in place, then coat the wig in multiple thin layers of a fabric glue, allowing each layer to dry for a few hours before proceeding with the next. After the glue has dried, Usually overnight to a couple of days, I carefully remove the elastics before removing the wig cap itself from the doll's head. At this point the plastic will most likely be stuck to the cap, so you can just peel that off before marking the hairline you want for the wig and then trim the excess fabric. This leaves us with a lovely wig cap. I'll have a wig playlist linked above so you can see other videos that explain this process as well if you want something more visual. With the wig cap done, let's talk about the actual material we're using. Back in the days of my youth, I think it was 2015, uh, Doll Chateau released their dolls Queena and Douglas, and these dolls were just like so cool. I loved their styling so much. Their clothes were cute, especially the fluffy butts. Uh, I loved the way they seemed to evoke ballerina aesthetics. And weirdly enough, the thing I loved most about them was their wigs. I thought it was so cool and quirky to see them have feathers for hair instead of the synthetic fibers, which were the main material of the time. Fast forward to 2019, and I feel like I have enough skill to attempt making a feather wig for my doll Atlas. He's supposed to look kind of otherworldly. I thought this texture difference for his hair would look fantastic. To my experience, any sort of feather should work for making the wig. However, I must encourage you to buy fake feathers or buy feathers from a source that does not harm its burbs. I had a lot of trouble finding synthetic feathers for such a small scale, so I ended up selecting feathers from a lovely woman on Hetzi who collects her feathers from the bottom of her pet's cages, so there was no harm done to the feathery friends. Please source your materials ethically if possible. The most important thing to note is that the feathers have a somewhat firm quill. That's the bit in the middle that holds all the fluffy parts together, but at the end where it has no fluffy, bit, fluffy bits. Fluffy bit, bit, bit. Since this is what we'll be using to attach the feathers to the head. Your feathers basically need something to affix them to the wig cap without using up all of the barbs, since we want those to be free and act as the doll's hair. Since I use real feathers, the shaft and quill were made of keratin and were thus, you know, as hard as fingernails. So that gives you some idea of the stiffness I mean. Synthetic feathers have even harder shafts usually, so they're great for what we want. If the feathers are too long, you can absolutely trim them to length. And that's something you can actually use to your advantage to make really cool long hairstyles or like quirky short hairstyles. It all depends on the kind of feathers you have access to. Imagine making a wig entirely of like 30 centimeter long flight feathers. That would be really cool. I recommend trimming the quill end of the feather as this will give you a more natural taper and it will make the wig look more realistic. Well, as realistic as a wig made of feathers can look, but you know what I mean. Something else to take into consideration is the curvature of the feather. 
So if you look at the feather from the side, it will either curl in one direction or be extremely flat. These are the things you need to take into consideration when choosing your feathers and positioning them for gluing. Since Atlas was basically going to have, you know, a very simple bowl cut and my feathers were short, I glued them all with the curve of the feather following the curve of the head. If I'd glued them in the opposite direction, the wig would have been very flicky and outwards and very stylish. If the feathers had been straight, well, I don't know how to describe that hairstyle, but it would have been different to the first two. So take some time not only to organize your feathers by the size and the curvature, but play around with how you want to position them on the head since that will allow you to figure out where you need to glue them. Speaking of glue, the adhesive you're going to use is important. You want something that dries pretty quickly and something that is strong enough to hold the feathers so that they don't start falling down the wig and sagging. Otherwise your wig will just be a hot mess. For large wigs, hot glue is a good option, but since Atlas is a tiny, tiny doll with a tiny, tiny noggin, I opted to use two-part epoxy as I knew hot glue would be too unruly to try and control on such a small scale. For that reason, I applied my glue with a toothpick and waited a little between layers for them to dry. The gluing process itself is actually pretty straightforward. It's similar to how I've shown in previous videos, actually. You want to start at the hairline of the wig and glue upwards to the part line. You do this by applying glue to the wig cap and holding the quill of the feather in that little dollop of glue as the glue dries. Yes, it's tedious, but I imagine it's a lot easier to manage on a larger doll's head and it will be a lot less slow paced. As you can see, most of my feathers were so small that I had to place them with tweezers. But again, I imagine that's not something that's going to be an issue on larger heads. Seriously, because I got real feathers that were like little, little fluffy butt feathers. And because I was making a wig for such a small doll, most of my feathers were like under two centimeters long. And yes, that was just as slow going as you can imagine it was. When it comes to the so-called part line of the wig, you'll need to be delicate in your work as you don't want to glue new feathers to the barbs of the feathers you've already placed, and you really don't want any exposed glue or exposed quills. For Atlas's wig, it was quite simple as his feathers all came to a single point. If you go with this style, trim the quill of a group of feathers and arrange them in such a way that their shafts all radiate out from one point so that the barbs of the feathers cover the quill and the glue from all the previous feathers. It's super simple and looks really neat, and it's extremely effective if you use a lot of downy barbs at the end of your feathers. To make a part in the line, however, you need to go a bit slower. If you want to use the feathers that have downy barbs at the base, then positioning a bunch of feathers in two rows is quite easy, as the down of the feathers will easily cover the meeting point. However, if you want your wig to look a little more tidy and have none of the floofiness from the downy barbs, you'll want to create your part line by staggering the feathers as you go. This allows you to conceal the glued shafts while having the feathers radiate in two specific directions, running parallel to one another, giving you a more conventional hair part line. It's definitely just as easy as the other method, but it will take a little bit more time since you essentially need to slide the feather shafts between one another to get that neat look. And once you're done with the part, that's basically it. You have a super cute and super unique feather wig. Now Atlas is pretty boring since he has a bowl cut and white hair, but you could go crazy with style since synthetic fibers come in a myriad of colors. It's really up to your own creativity how crazy your wigs can go. I actually wanna make more wigs since it's an easy process and it's actually really zen, just like sitting there and zoning out and gluing your feathers. <laughs> I hope this video was easy to understand as well. I apologize profusely for the lost footage. If there's anything that was difficult to follow, don't hesitate to drop a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer any questions that you do have. 
and if you make a feather wig please show me i want to see so many more and i'll definitely be making a few for monster high customs in the future because they're just so cool to look at so yeah that's it for today thanks so much for watching give atlas and his new wig a thumbs up subscribe do all that youtube stuff and i'll see you in the next one bye